sorry. I'll just be a minute. You had a minute. The next one comes up. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling? This season's tossball predictions? The quickest way out of town? Mechanical tomfoolery is well out of my purview. I suggest you take such matters to Mr. Tobson in the cannery. Oh, and a word of warning. If you're considering wandering around outside the safety of the town, you'd best be cautious. Marauders are about. Though, if you are planning on venturing outside, I do have a proposition that may interest you. One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. So you'll consider it. I do appreciate you hearing me out, and, um, your discretion. It's a handwritten journal, a faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? I just want to keep the writing out of layman's hands. It wouldn't do for such information to fall into public consumption. It is not only a beautiful relic of a bygone time, it's also the thoughts of an early thinker on the nature of man's place in the cosmos. Not many in this colony could understand its true value, should they ever read it. Thank you. If you retrieve it, you can always find me here. You think corporate's ever gonna visit?
It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. And before you ask, I'm all out of deluxe salt tuna, all I've got is gourmet. You ought to go have a talk with the boss, Reed Thompson. He's up in his tower above the cannery. Music to my ears. Another day at the cannery. Don't go knocking your work.
Yes, Mr. Thompson. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. Did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him about his mental state? You don't know that. I could have been saying anything. Maybe I said vague. You know how words sound a mite strange when you're sick. Wait, no. Oh, damn it. Okay, listen. Maybe I am feeling a little under the weather, but I swear I'm on the mend. Please, don't tell the constable. She'll toss me in the sick house. I would have confessed before the good vicar. Get some ablutions for my spirit. Just never found my courage is all. Hey, you're hale and healthy, and possibly for hire, ain't ya? I'd do a good turn for an expiring old man? There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, Law, it's in my spleen now. I can feel it. Just keep your head down when you're in there. Marauders have taken over. Probably tracking mud all over the archives. I know that. But I got nobody else to turn to. Reed would have wrote me up. Constable would have locked me up and wrote me up. Could have gone to see the good vicar, but... I never did find my courage. You're making a mistake working for Abernathy. Excuse me. I'm Esther Blaine, Spacer's Choice Actuary. I overheard your talk with Abernathy. I hope you're not thinking about getting him that medicine. Abernathy is a well-known hypochondriac. Anthracillin is wasted on him. You're better off selling it to me instead. All I'm saying is Abernathy's worked in this town longer than some of us been alive. How do I put this gently? He's a... Uh... He's got a lot of cobwebs up in his attic. I probably shouldn't tell you. Don't want you implicated for what I'm trying to do. All right, here's a summary. A lot of sick people in this town, and we don't have the medicine to treat them all. Can't reach out to corporate without crossing a river of red tape, so I'm reaching out to you. I'm paid better than Abernathy. Whatever he's giving you, I will do you one better. That's all I can ask of you.
Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls and low, low prices. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Got a knack for being discreet-like? There's money to be made, long as you keep your nose clean. Edgewater is a company town, board-owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see? Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Yeah? Former people, yeah. Marauder's been raiding my graves, you see. Hence the armed guards. Well, if you're gonna go headhunting, talk to Constable Reyes back in town. She pays for Marauders by the finger. Oh no, they are after the most precious loot of all. Spacer's Choice Company property. If those marauders swipe any more bodies out of my cemetery, company's gonna duck my pay.
Hey, you hear about Wilson? Almost lost a finger. I know how you feel. Welcome to the Spacer's Choice Constabulary. We are Halcyon's leading brand in frontier justice. The office is writing up promotion. Purchase three criminal investigations and the fourth one's free. As a Spacer's Choice Constable, I am authorized to grant you legal authority toward apprehending wanted criminals. Know how to carry yourself in a fight? I've got bounties out for these three marauders. Cross them off and bring me their fingers. Just one per marauder, please. I'll dust off the old fingerprint roller. 
as long as your questions fall within the acceptable margins of curiosity. A friend of mine died a couple weeks back. Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. No, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Thank you, no. I despise the cereals. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. You know about Eugene? How? Then, you know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. More than a few. Those teeth were his personal savings. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Yes, I suppose I must. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU.
you want to mingle, go try the cantina. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Look, I got my gravesite fees right here. See? I'm good for my word. Get me that medicine, and I'll see to your payment. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Shit. Silas still on about that? Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. The guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Eugene wasn't family. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. When one of your workers commits a crime, the entire town pays for it. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know, Eugene was an asset to us all. May his Adams be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives.
Bring us honor, soldier. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. Mechanical repellent! A stroke of inspiration from the law itself. Here, I've been saving up a couple bits for just such a project. Grave digging's a fine profession. Always work to be had, and nary a word of complaint out of your clients. Yeah? What about him? Yeah. Funny thing, Eugene's body ain't where it's supposed to be. The night we were supposed to commend his body to the earth, I had his grave all dug up and ready, right? And so I thought, I'll just rest my eyes a bit. When I woke up, his body was gone, spirited away vanished. The footprints nearby suggested that Eugene was stolen by marauders. Or he rose from the dead. Let me know if you find anything. You run into any trouble? Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Hmm. Uh. Suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another.
I smell blood!
Thank mm -hmm. you. 